As Thanksgiving travel is right around the corner, see how boarders plan to manage traffic. One new attraction will be making its way to the harbor of Buffalo. And local legislators are vaccinating, or vaccinating their opinion about the new vaccine mandate. WT, WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Jacob Bradley. And I'm Amani Dela Cruz. Healthcare providers and local lawmakers are speaking out against recent decisions made from the Oswego County Legislative Board just a few weeks ago. The new legislator follows or allows county officials to oppose any and all local, state, and federal mandates regarding vaccines. In a press conference yesterday, Democrats gathered at Constitution Park next to the Oswego County Legislative Building where Democratic Representative Tom Drum of Oswego and Mary Skadik of Minetto voiced that this is about the pandemic and not politics and that and that this is a time to come together and take care of people. Legislators say that while the mandate applies to everyone, residents should take precautions that they say see best fit for their families. Several school districts in Oswego County are partnering with Connects Care to offer COVID-19 vaccine clinics for kids ages 5 to 12, 5 to 11. Connects Care is a federally qualified health care center that operates several health care clinics in Oswego County. The vaccine clinics will all take place from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Also offered are COVID vaccine clinics for kids ages 12 and up. COVID booster shots, flu shots, and drive through clinics are available. Appointments are encouraged, but walk-ins will be accepted if enough shots are available. SUNY Oswego will waive student application fees between November 8th and 21st. The college is introducing its free tuition plus scholarships for high achieving first year and less year scholars. Attending SUNY Oswego free tuition plus scholarships cover 25% to 75% of a student's on-campus meal plan cost. They are awarded to the top 35 to 45% entering first year students. Future Lakers are encouraged to take advantage of this new and exciting opportunity. You can learn more about it at oswego.edu slash go. Oswego Mayor Billy Barlow announces the annual tree lighting celebration will be held on Saturday, November 27th in Civic Plaza with activities beginning at 3 p.m. The event will include horse carriage rides through downtown, live ice sculpture demonstration, Santa meeting kids, and children will be able to ride a train on the lawn of City Hall. A holiday special will also be televised and live on stream the p.m. by fireworks over the Oswego River at 6.10 p.m. As the holiday travel season approaches, high gas prices are quickly becoming a political liability for President Joe Biden. Caitlin Collins reports. Tonight, high gas prices and few solutions. We're looking at all the tools in our arsenal. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of gas now $3.42 compared to $2.11 a year ago. Increasing pressure on the White House as 53 million people prepare to travel for Thanksgiving. But like presidents who came before him, Joe Biden has few options when it comes to combating high fuel prices. Every president is frustrated because they can't control the price of gasoline because it's a global market. The group of oil producing nations known as OPEC rebuffing Biden's calls for them to pump more oil. They're going to pump some more oil. Whether they pump enough oil is a different thing. Oil is a global market. It is controlled by a cartel. That cartel is called OPEC. The president also considering tapping the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, though industry experts have warned that would do little to alleviate the problem. The president is looking at all of the tools that he has. What about the Strategic Petroleum That's one of the reserve. tools that he has, and uh, he is certainly looking at that. Nearly a dozen Senate Democrats are calling on Biden to consider all the tools available at your disposal even the extreme step of banning American oil exports, which Goldman Sachs warned would be counterproductive and could actually raise prices. A new forecast from the federal government predicts that Brent crude, the international oil price benchmark, will remain near current levels for the rest of 2021, before eventually dropping next year. As Biden gets the blame for people paying more for everything from groceries to gasoline. How many of you have been to the grocery store lately and noticed what's going on here? The White House offering few specifics on what's next. Is that because he feels that his hands 
are tied when it comes to what he can actually do to try to combat high gas prices? No, I wouldn't read, the, read it that way. We just don't have anything right now to, to announce. Biden continues to blame the nation's high gas prices on Russia and the OPEC nation's refusal to pump enough oil. His administration is taking small steps to try and control gas prices. Governor Kathy Hochul announced the construction of a $13 million outdoor entertainment pavilion in Buffalo's Outer Harbor. This project will renovate a once long abandoned warehouse into an event center. The center will utilize existing parking lots and reclaim seven acres of a contaminated property to open additional public access with scenic lake views. The project will beautify the habitat with trees, shrubs, and meadow areas while adding diverse plants to support migrating and nesting birds. Construction is expected to be completed by the fall of 2023. A new, a new vaccine incentive program has launched called Vaccinate, Educate, Graduate. Parents of children ages 5 through 12 through 11 who will receive their first vaccine doses by December 19th can enter the state's incentive program for a chance for their child to win a full scholarship to any CUNY or SCUNY college or university. The scholarship includes tuition, room and board. Ten winners will be announced each week beginning November 24th with an additional with a total of 50 winners elected over the five week period. All school age children are eligible for the vaccine. There's no excuse. We've ordered an awful lot. We have over 700,000 doses, uh, 300,000 for New York City, over 400,000 for the state of New York. Half of the population of children in this age group, we already have the doses ready to administer and we're ready to get more as soon as we need them. And that's what we're focused on. Schools throughout the city and are accepting walk-ins. To find a school near you, visit the New York City Department of Education's homepage. Our neighbors across the border are now open to the U.S. and Canada for travel. In order to cross the border, travelers need to be fully vaccinated. Border officials warn that travelers must have a quarantine plan should it become necessary to do so. Unvaccinated children under the age of 12 are allowed to enter Canada with their vaccinated parents. The CDC considers Canada have a high level of COVID transmission, so the agency recommends travelers still mask up and social distance. Coming up later tonight, find out why one U.S. man is strike in Russia on a hunger strike. And see which human rights activists tied the knot this past weekend. Now let's take a quick look at weather with Storm Team 10 meteorologist Joe Champagne. Thank you. Well, we will have those rain showers moving in through the region tonight. But tomorrow is looking much better with mild temperatures for tomorrow. And then we are looking at some returning showers for the weekend. And I will talk about the potential for rain and snow mix as well coming up after the break. Thank you. Thank you. cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org.
Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Joseph Champagne. Like I said before the break, we do have those rain showers working through the region tonight. However, that will end by tomorrow and we will have mild temperatures for the day on Wednesday. And then we will have a chance for some more weekend showers with a chance of snow mixing in there at times. I'll have a little bit more on that coming up a little bit in later. Taking a look at current temperatures across New York State here, most of us in the upper 40s and low 50s here in Oswego, we're at 51 degrees. And the upper 40s and mid 40s will be confined to the lower elevations of in the valleys. Looking at the current Doppler radar, like I said, we do have those very um, moderate to light showers moving through the region right now, coming off of the lake, moving west to east here. That will continue through the majority of the night and will be clearing for your day Wednesday, luckily. Here's a look at tonight's time cast. We do have, again, rain right through the overnight hours. By 7 o'clock in the morning, we will have partly cloudy skies with a, with a temperature of 46 degrees and that northwest wind at 12 miles per hour. Now looking at tonight's overall forecast, rain low of 46, a northwest wind, a little bit breezy, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And that will end for the day Wednesday. Look at that. By 9 o'clock in the morning, very nice conditions, sunny skies, highs, or excuse me, uh, temperatures climbing nicely right around 50 degrees, and those will max out right around 52 degrees. Uh, however, take a look at the winds here. We will be a little bit breezy through the day on Wednesday, so keep that in mind while you're going out there. Uh, and then wrapping up here with your seven-day forecast, a beautiful week for a beautiful day for Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, still mild temperatures, clouds back in the picture. And then by the weekend, we do have some more showers working into the picture. Now, I want you to look at next Monday and Tuesday where we do have some heavier rain showers and potentially some sleet and snow mixing in at times. So stay tuned for more weather throughout the week with WTOP. More news and sports after the break. <laughs> It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy, and busy people can't have prediabetes. Oh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. Is there a danger hiding in your home? Unused opioid medicines could harm your family. Find your unused opioid pills, patches, or syrups, and learn how to dispose of them safely at fda.gov slash drug disposal. The second I got on the campus, I knew Oswego was the place to go. There's a place for everybody at Oswego. This school just opens the world to you. Have the opportunity to explore and to learn so many different things, not only about yourself, but the people around you and the world. It definitely is about the student. I felt it to be very about me. Now that I'm here, I can't match myself anywhere else. Stuck on the railroad crossing? Get out of your vehicle. For help, call the number on the blue and white emergency notification system sign at the crossing. Give them the crossing number to alert train traffic. Remember, find the blue and white to save your life. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. The U.S. is accepting fully vaccinated foreign travelers at airports and landing borders after 20 long months. International air travelers must have proof of a COVID-19 vaccination and or a negative test. Land travelers also require to show proof of vaccination, but no test. The National Retail Federation says U.S. retailers are hoping the return of international travelers may lead to a new wave of spenders, generating more sales as the holiday season quickly approaches. New details, new details are emerging in the deadly crowd surge at Houston's Astro World Festival. Lawsuits continue to pile up against rapper Travis Scott and those behind the festival, while investigators while investigators look 
into look into what exactly caused the death of eight victims. Isabel Rosales reports on the latest development, including the timeline for when investigators accept to get, expect to get crucial answers. Intense scrutiny over the deadly Astral World Festival. They were on the ground and basically getting trampled and no one would pick them up. Rapper Travis Scott and those behind promoting and planning the event under the microscope, accused of not doing enough to prevent or react to the crowd surge. The way the barricades were set up had people trapped in and it was a death trap. The medical examiner's office says it could take several weeks to determine the cause of death for the eight victims. Many people want to shed blame, but it's really too early. Scott says he will pay for the funeral costs of the victims. Three people remain hospitalized, including a nine-year-old boy. His family says he's in a medically induced coma. A nine-year-old child had a heart attack because he was being trampled so severely. Lawsuits continue to stack up. At least 18 filed since Friday. This should have been stopped from the very beginning. And what we know for sure is that Travis Scott continued to perform. Scott maintains he had no idea the extent of what was happening in the crowd. Fellow performer Drake posted Monday, my heart is broken for the families and friends of those who lost their lives and for anyone who is suffering. Meanwhile, according to the Wall Street Journal, people familiar with the investigation said investigators are looking into whether a batch of counterfeit pills, possibly laced with fentanyl, played a role in some of the deaths. Authorities have been reached out to for comment. I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. After many tragic deaths, the investigation is still underway to help the family of those lost. Find some closure, more updates on the case of death and lawsuits soon to come. Kmart is set to have only six remaining locations in the U.S. by the end of the year. Kmart is owned by Sears, which purchased the chain out of bankruptcy in 2005. There was 2,100 Kmart locations at the time of its 2002 bankrupt fi bankruptcy filing and 1,400 when it was purchased by Sears. The, combi the combined company, Sears Holdings, filed for bankruptcy in 2018 and has since been closing stores under both brands. Kmart has struggled to find the work, what the workers need to keep the doors open. Most of the soon to be shuttered stories, stores will close just before the holiday shopping season. The last remaining store on the West Coast will close the week before Christmas. Police arrest. Police arrests have an Ohio man after a cam camera doorbell allegedly caught him trying to get into his neighbor's home. That neighbor says something about him always made her uneasy. More details now. He took away the, the, the peace and, and quiet that we had in our new home. It was a terrible invasion of privacy. Newtown mom Megan Allen caught her neighbor you see here on her ring doorbell camera using a knife on her front door trying to break in. He had offered to mow the lawn and um, made, came across as trying to just be a friendly neighbor, but he, his vibes were very just aggressive to say good morning and good night and beautiful lady this and that. She says she bought the camera on Friday. Just after midnight Monday, she says he was at her door. She called 911. Newtown Police, Marymount Police and the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office responded to her home on Drake Street. They arrested 29-year-old Jorge Alberto Chavez Reynoso in nearby woods where he told them he wanted to save her from a big man he saw. He didn't fight at all. He he just gave us his hands and we were able to handcuff him and take him into custody. Newtown Police Chief Tom Sinan says Allen did everything right. Because she was calm, because she had that early warning system, and because she was able to give us a lot of information, it helped us not only apprehend the suspect, but it helped, she helped herself and protected herself and her family. Allen doesn't know what Chavez Reynoso wanted to do, but says he will not ruin her new home. We're going to be safe and be smart. But I, I, don't, I don't see why someone should scare us away. Um, we're not going to leave. Police say they've never dealt with the suspect before this incident. They are working to get the doorbell video footage over to prosecutors who are charging him with attempted burglary, burglary trespassing, and carrying a concealed weapon. The family of former U.S. Marine Trevor Reed, who is currently in imprisonment in Russia, says he is on a hunger strike. It is in his protest to his detainment and the quote numerous and flagrant 
violations of his human rights by Russian authorities. In July 2020, he was sentenced to nine years in prison after he had an altercation after a night of drinking. His family hopes to meet with President Joe Biden when they visit Washington next month. Nobel laureate and human rights activist Malala Yousafzai announced she is now married. She made the announcement public on her Twitter with a post of her and her husband. Malala has gained international recognition for her activism against the Taliban's efforts to stop girls from attending school. She was shot in the head when she was only 15 by a member of Taliban. In 2014, she won the Nobel Peace Prize at the age of 17, becoming the youngest laureate of the prize. The Biden administration announced that new alleviate the supply chain issues in the U.S. ports. In freight networks, the plan includes new construction projects for coastal navigation, inland waterways, and land ports of entry. It also allows flexibility for port grants through the Department of Transportation to solve supply chain's disruptions. According to a senior official, implementation of the plan is already underway. In Lebanon, many farmers produce very little that can be exported, but local farmers say they have a crop that the world wants, if the government will let them sell it. They're bringing in the sheaves in Lebanon's Bekaa Valley. Sheaves and sheaves of cannabis, or hashish as it's called here. The climate in this part of Lebanon is changing. It is getting hotter and it is getting drier. And perhaps this crop, hashish, is the ideal thing to grow in this changing climate. It's drought resistant and doesn't need much in the way of pesticides and fertilizers. Late October and the days are still warm. The harvest delayed because the rains came late. Before there was more rain in the spring, says this farmer, who preferred to give his name simply as Abu Sada. There's been much less rain in the last three or four years. Climate change they can handle. The biggest bummer for hashish farmers is politics. George Fahri heads the Cannabis Growers Union, founded after the Lebanese parliament passed a law last year legalizing the cultivation of cannabis for medicinal use. But the government, bankrupt and perpetually embroiled in the weeds of political paralysis, has failed to translate the new law into reality. Not giving up, Abu Hanna will continue fighting to farm his special plant, despite federal officials trying to stop him. Coming up in sports, our sportsman, Brian Rudman. Brian, can you give us a quick preview? Of course, thank you both. An exciting day in Laker sports. Women's basketball back in action tonight for the first time in over a year. And could we be seeing a Laker compete in Beijing for the Winter Olympics this year? I'll have all the details right after the break. There are more than a dozen significant tropical and winter storms that threaten the East Coast. So chances are there will be more hurricanes and blizzards near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today.
Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Brian Rudman with your Tuesday Night Sports Report. Exciting news for the Laker faithful as they may get to watch one of their own compete on the national stage. It was announced earlier today that Oswego State women's hockey player Simone Bednarik has been named to the Slovakian Olympic roster. Bednarik and the team and Team Slovakia begin qualifying play this upcoming Thursday, November the 11th at 1 p.m. when Team Slovakia will face off with Sweden in their first qualifying hockey game. Slovakia will have to win their group, which also includes France and Korea in order to punch their ticket to the Winter Olympics this upcoming February in Beijing. Now a teammate that earned an honor a bit more local as Oswego State's Kylie Grugan has been named the new HL Player of the Week for her three goal efforts this past weekend in matchups against Buffalo State and Potsdam. Grugan scored two goals against Buffalo State on Saturday, including the game winner in the second period, leading the Lakers to the 8-1 victory, before adding another tally on Sunday against Potsdam that helped in the efforts to earn a tie. This marks the second straight week a Laker has received the honor as Grugan joins Megan Teachout, who earned the honor last week. And now moving to field hockey, as the three players were named to the all-conference teams for this past season from the Oswego State Lakers. Junior Caitlin Mastrocco, a defender, and junior Erica Shebline, a goalie, were named to the all-conference first team, while senior midfielder Jenna Rogers was named to the second team. Mastrocco led the team with 15 goals this season, while Rogers led the team with nine assists. Shebline this year was phenomenal in goal, all season long posting a 1.70 goals against average. And the return of Lakers basketball is upon us as earlier tonight, the Oswego State women's basketball team kicked off their season on the road, falling to the Alfred State Saxons by a score of 74 to 67. Despite the loss, Danielle Kavana had a phenomenal day in her Lakers debut. Kavana put up 22 points, five assists and three rebounds. On the other side, it was Jillian Flint who led the way for the Saxons with 12 points. She was one of five double digit scorers for the home side and now from D3 basketball, let's transition to the NBA. Last night, the Knicks were in action down in Philadelphia. We'll start it in the second. Knicks up by 16, but R.J. Barrett gets it taken away by Corkman, who takes it straight to the hoop for the slam. Jump now to the fourth quarter. Barrett on the, on the drive, can't get it to go, but Taj Gibson, he's going to clean it right up. Knicks holding on to the slim six-point lead in the fourth quarter. Later on, Barrett for three on the break. Money. Knicks lead by seven with seven to play. Barrett pumped up on that one. Minute later, Milton drives, lobs it up. Drummond throws it down. Jump another minute. Curry to Niang. And that one is good for three. We got a one-point game with five to play, and Philly is loving it. Knicks now up by three. Randall, he's just going to take this one for himself, and he's going to double the lead with that three-point shot. He was five for ten from deep on the day. Now lead back to three. Kemba to guess who? Julius Randall again. No doubt about that one with a hand in his face. That's all the Knicks would lead. They would roll, win 103-96. to Randall. Double-double, 31 points, 12 rebounds as the Knicks improve to 74 on the season. So, Brian, i got to ask you, what are we looking at this weekend for Well, sports? hockey. It's Teal weekend, right? The men's team faces off with Cortland Friday night in the Teal game, and then the women welcome the number one team in the, in the nation in Division Three hockey oh. against the Plattsburgh Cardinals on Saturday. And Max Teal tournament kicking off men's basketball. That's, gonna be, that's what I'm most big looking weekend, forward to. Big weekend, big weekend. Basketball this weekend. Sports, now, yeah. Joe, I want to ask you, just what's going on this weekend? What, what can we look at as far as weather? Well, as far as tomorrow, um, if you can get outside, definitely do it because by the weekend we do have much cooler air working in and then maybe some snow as well. So I'm hoping to get outside very soon so I can finally get those last bit of embrace before the winter months exactly, come. Yeah. But that's all for our report tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Impractical Improv. Thank you for watching. Have a great night, everyone. Yeah, I can't wait.